Oh baby, we are finally back on a Harley Davidson. That is right, Harley has sent this Lowrider ST so that I could do a full shakedown on this bike. And I have actually spent more time on this motorcycle than my own Ducati. I'm really, really enjoying this motorcycle, but we have to give it the full day in the saddle shakedown. And that's what we're doing out here today. That is correct, folks. You heard me right. Harley Davidson sent this motorcycle out to me. I got a call from my guy and he was like, yeah, you want a Lowrider ST? And I was like, yes, please. I'll take one. Thank you. And uh, here it is. Showed up. And we are going to be doing quite a bit with this bike because I don't just have it for today. I have it for a couple of weeks. We're going to be doing some touring on this. We're going to be doing a bunch of different things. Now I will point out, because Harley has sent this motorcycle to me, they did send me a couple of different parts for it. The riser windscreen and the tall boy seat. But I have left this motorcycle bone stock just for this review so that we can see what it's like out of the factory. Everything else on this motorcycle is as it is when it rolls out of the dealership. And that's what we're gonna be checking out today. Things are gonna look a little bit different as you're gonna see in a second, but without further ado, let's just dive on into my first impressions. Okie dokie folks, like I said, things are a little bit different today. And obviously the first thing that you may notice is uh, we're not kind of anywhere. We're actually just outside of Wimberley and I've ridden this motorcycle in mostly on the highway because for this part of my first impressions we're actually not going to do any highway stuff. Now why you might ask? Well it's a Harley Davidson. I mean if it can't do the highway what's its raison d'etre right? So uh, we're going to cover the highway in full in the commuting segment and we're going to devote this entire entire first impression segment to twisty roads because the ST in lowrider ST supposedly stands for sport touring and we're gonna test the sport part of that equation okie dokie so hopping on the lowrider ST I am going to give you uh, my initial impressions on the ergonomics. It does feel just a smidge small. So to get a little bit more ground clearance, they raised the pegs up, which brings my knees up over the gas tank. Now this is not uncommon for me on a lot of Harleys. Basically every low rider or uh, every soft tail rather that I've gotten on, uh, my knees come up over the tank. That's that's just sort of a given, and uh, I'm used to it. I don't love it. I'd kind of wish my knees were lower, but you know, eh, it is what it is. If you're a tall guy getting on a soft tail, you are probably going to encounter the very same issues that I'm encountering here. And uh, the seat's really comfortable. It's just a little bit close to the handlebars. Did I leave my sunglasses on the ground? God damn it, I'm an idiot. Oh, back we go. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right guys, this video wasn't sponsored by Flying Eyes, but now it is. I literally ran these things. <laughs> I literally ran these things over with the Lowrider ST. Uh, and they didn't crack, there's um, you can literally see the shape of the tire right there. Um, wow, okay, yeah, 800, well, no, it's not 800 pounds, it's like 600 and something pounds, I don't know. I haven't looked at the specs yet, guys. Um, yeah, that much poundage of Harley did not break these flying eyes. <laughs> the frames are still intact. Uh, there's some obvious scuffing on the lenses, but, uh, their lens warranty will take, <laughs> take care of it. Oh, man. And the nose pieces just bend right back into place. I swear to God I did not stage this. 
I wasn't going to put this out with a uh, with a sponsor, but uh, that that literally is the perfect real world test. Um, okay, yeah. So you want to get yourself a pair of these Harley Proof Flying Eyes, uh, these uncrushable sunglasses. All you got to do is click that link down in the description below. Use the code SPITE for 10% off your order. And uh, yeah, um, wow. Can't believe I ran over the flying eyes with the Harley. Oh, that was not planned at all. Whew, okay. Now we can get on with the, uh, with the road test. Okay, now, as I was saying, before I ran over my flying eyes with the Harley, uh, yeah, the fine folks over at Harley Davidson have sent me a uh, tall boy seat for this motorcycle and a taller windscreen for this bike. So we do have a uh, we do have some extra parts that are going to be coming. But I wanted to test this motorcycle in its stock state because that's how you're going to buy it. It doesn't make sense for me to test the motorcycle and review it when it's done, when it's got all the things installed. So I wanted to give you guys as raw a review on this thing as I possibly could. Man, there's so many Harleys out today. With that out of the way, let's talk about how it's feeling on this twisty road. Now, to be perfectly honest, I have never really considered cruisers to be anything more than what they are and that is to be just you know a nice thing to run down a road that looks a lot like this it's kind of straight right here however harley has been slowly taking steps into improving the handling of their motorcycle increased ground clearance higher bags higher pipes all of that stuff because they're sick and tired of people saying, yeah, the Harley's great when you're doing this, but you want to be able to chuck it through a corner. Now, the question is, can you? <sighs> yeah, yeah, you definitely can put this thing in a corner and feel confident about it. That's the biggest thing that I find a lot of people uh, are worried about is the confidence of chucking a giant motorcycle like this. And for those of you who ride big Harleys, yeah, this is small, but for people coming from sport bikes, this thing's huge. And people are nervous about the idea of throwing these things in a corner because they are so goddamn big. You know, they don't flip side to side super agilely. Um, they're a little bit more ponderous on the brakes. You gotta brake a little bit earlier. And that scares people. So what you see in this lowrider ST is you see Harley's attempt to smooth over those edges. So how's it feeling? Feels pretty darn good, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I did jack the pressures up on the tires quite a bit. Um, the front tire is running 36, the back is running 42. That is astronomically high pressure for somebody who is used to sport bikes. I normally run like 34, 34 on the street. Uh, and that feels great to me. But honestly, going up to 42 is giving me that kind of nice rock hard rear underneath all this weight and underneath all the torque. Dipping on this motorcycle with the increased pressures feels exactly like you would expect it to on a normal motorcycle. You know, on a, uh, you know, standard bike, not a cruiser. So that really does help smooth over that worry, uh, especially since a lot of people coming to cruisers for the first time are weirded out by the seating position. This is a very different seating position than you're used to if you're used to standards and sport bikes and naked bikes. Very different. Now let's take a second and talk about the brakes on this bad boy. So the front brakes, I believe, I've, I'll have to make this uh, check when I get to the spec segment. I believe that these are Harley branded Brembo calipers on the front wheel. So that means we've got two Brembos up front that are doing the bulk of the stopping. And you've got the uh, rear brake, which really helps when you come barreling over a blind corner like that and you need to slow down quick fast and in a hurry like 
one thing that you are going to notice too, once you get on a Harley for the first time, or once you get on this guy for the first time, is your body position, the way you move around on the motorcycle is very different. You have a tendency to want to not lean into a curve. You want to basically stay seated in the motorcycle because of the way that the seat cups your butt. You really got to fight that instinct on this motorcycle and you do have to sort of lean over. You want you want your butt cheeks touching the side panniers. That's that's how you know you're getting after it on this bike. You want to basically move your crack to the crack. You want to do that. You want to ride this thing like a sport bike cuz the harder you ride it, the better it feels. So guys, that is going to wrap up my initial impressions, but let's pull this thing over figure out what the specs are on this motorcycle and then talk about some pros and cons because for a motorcycle it costs this much money and uh, I actually don't know how much it is but I know it costs a lot of money it's not perfect and there are some things that I find a little bit Alrighty folks, I hope you're ready for some big numbers because when you're talking about a Harley Davidson and its specs, you are seeing some very, very large numbers. The first one I want to talk about, 117 cubic inches. That's a little over 1900 cc's. This is a big engine and boy oh boy does it feel like it. This thing is an air and oil cooled engine. It's the biggest Milwaukee 8 that you can get aside from their 131 motor, but that's a whole other animal. This is the biggest factory motor that you're gonna be able to get for your soft tail right off of the factory floor. And it's the same one that you're going to see in the Road Glide ST and the Street Glide ST, which makes this, in my opinion, the bike to get. Now, it's really hard to talk weight when you're talking about these cruisers, but this bike weighs in a little over 730 pounds. So that's a big old boy. However, it is 200 pounds lighter than the touring frame motorcycles. Those motorcycles are extremely heavy and the 103 horsepower, 125 foot pounds of torque that this engine makes doesn't feel nearly as potent in those bikes as it does here, which is why when I reviewed the Road Glide ST and the Street Glide ST, I said that this was probably the bike to get if you want something that feels a lot faster. But before we get into the ergonomics on this, we have to talk about the price. This motorcycle is just shy of $22,000, $21,795, I believe. I'll have the correct number on screen. The Lowrider S is 17.5, so this bike is almost $5,000 more expensive. Do I think it's $5,000 worth more of bike? Not really. Now let's throw a leg over this bike and talk a little bit about the ergonomics because for somebody my size, six foot four with a 32 inch inseam, I'm actually kind of pushing the boundaries of this motorcycle's stock ergo setup. So putting a leg up on the peg, you're seeing that I have a very aggressive bend in my knee. I'm actually seated a little farther forward than I would like, and it's relatively cramped. There's no real adjustment to be made here other than getting a new seat, moving the handlebars around, or stuff like that. Now with ergonomics out of the way, let's talk pros and cons on this boy, because there's a lot to talk about here. And the first con that I'm gonna bring up is the price. I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in the con category. I did say that it is appropriate for this motorcycle, but I would prefer to have seen this motorcycle right around $20,000. I think that's kind of the sweet spot. Especially when you consider that inside this bat wing here, there is nothing going on. You don't have any kind of speaker situation. You don't have any kind of adjustability in this windscreen. This is just one big chunk of plastic, basically. If there was like a speaker system in here, then maybe I get 21.7, but for nothing to be in here, especially when the dashboard is as simple as it is on this motorcycle, I don't really get 21. I think 20,000 is where it's supposed to be. One really big pro on this bike, the engine. I cannot say enough how awesome this 117 is. 
If you are a Harley guy and you have not ridden the 117, you owe it to your, well, maybe you don't because you're gonna wanna trade in. But anyway, you owe it to yourself to ride this engine. It is awesome. Now, with this being a modern bike, I would have liked to see more modernity from Harley Davidson on this. That's gonna be one of the cons on this bike. You look down at the cockpit, it's same old, same old Harley stuff. We still have the dual side blinker stuff, which I'll talk about later, but I, I don't really like the way that Harley does its clusters. They feel good, but give me the, give me the blinker on one side and give me more stuff on, give me more buttons, man. This is a big fancy bike and there's a lot of stuff you can turn on and turn off. Give me all the buttons. I want, I want more buttons, Harley, come on. Two things real quick before we round out this segment, we're gonna talk a little bit about the looks. I love the way that this bike looks. It's Baby Shark Nation all over the place. Love that. I don't like the gray though. I said it before when I reviewed the Road Glide ST, Street Glide ST, and now this, I don't like the gray. It looks unfinished, especially if they had gone with matte. Mercifully, we do have this nice gloss finish on here. It looks better, but it just, it doesn't look good especially with the bronze wheels. I really like the black colorway on this one. And it's the same price. So just go ahead and get the vivid black. You're gonna, you're gonna like yourself a lot more. There's nothing quite like a black Harley too. Last up, suspension. The suspension feels great on this thing. I really like the way that the suspension feels. I would jack up the rear a little bit more, but other than that, it's tuned really well. I do wish it was actually fully adjustable, but you know what, I can live with it. Again, I would like to see that price come down as a result of non-adjustable, but such is life. And that is gonna round out the pros and cons on this motorcycle, as well as the specs. It is time to get this thing out and see once and for all if the Harley Davidson can commute. Of course this thing can commute, but what's it like to ride it on the highway? Baby shark, do, 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 do. baby shark, do, do. Do, 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 baby shark, do, 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 baby shark, baby shark, do, 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 do. Now, for this review, I was actually planning to do a lot of my filming at Canyon Lake. Unfortunately, it's all closed, so I couldn't get into the Canyon Lake Park. So now I have to go back to Austin to find one of my nice other overlooks that I use. And uh, we're actually closer to San Antonio than we are to Austin. I've spent a long time on this motorcycle specifically so that I could hit 35 and use, you know, this thing as a proper cruising motorcycle, not just uh, on the twisty roads. And the biggest thing that I notice and have noticed today in terms of negatives for the ST is the fairing does like 80% of the job that I think it should. Um, the biggest thing that the fairing does for me, or rather it doesn't do for me, uh, is get the wind over my head. Now, that is a common problem, not just on adventure bikes for me, but on touring frame Harleys, on the road glide and the street bob, or street glide rather, uh, I have the wind coming right off the fairing and dumping it literally right at where my eyebrows are. And that's exactly where this is landing. It's right in the eyebrows. And I'm sure you're hearing it. Now, one thing I would like to say about that wind is because we have these channels here in the fairing <clears throat> is it's actually relatively smooth air. It's just high speed air that's hitting me in the face. Now, Let's talk a little bit about the highway manners of this motorcycle. <laughs> it cruises so well. Uh, like, let me show you this. So, I know this is gonna irritate a lot of people because I'm gonna take both my hands off the handlebars, but you can really steer this bike with your hips. It's great. It tracks such a straight line that you put the cruise control on and you just, It'll just go and go and go and go until the tank runs out. Now I'm gonna put my hands back on the handlebars to appease those people who are worried. But you, this thing tracks so straight. Um, <laughs> it's so easy to ride for hours and hours. And again, with the cruise control and how straight it tracks, 
you can steer with your hips and the bike goes exactly where you want it to go it's great normally on these uh highway segments i will talk about the technology uh there's not a lot to screw around with on this motorcycle there's no rider modes no nothing like that so you've got you know miles trip range time and uh, speed and then you've got your cruise control which the cruise control is super easy to use click it on click it down you're done there you go and it's got the roll to kill love the roll to kill on cruise control that's one of the best features on a motorcycle for cruise control you can't stand it when bikes that have cruise don't have that last thing i want to talk about technologically speaking uh dashboard i'm not a big fan on it honestly uh, it's a little small i like my big centerpiece dashes and this just this isn't doing it for me um it's fine visibility speaking when i have some shade on it but in direct sunlight it's shining light back at me and i can't read it because it's white on black and it's really hard for me to see without putting my head that i'm doing 80 miles an hour you know um it gives me everything i need to know but uh, i could do with a little bit bigger of a dash um if it were me i would go with the uh two round clocks right here i think that would be great i'm not sure how it would mess with you know the air flow situation from there but uh i would like the two round clocks now beyond that there's not really a whole lot uh to write home about i mean this is just a really nice cruising experience on this motorcycle uh we've got the bags which are you know plenty of room to carry everything you need to carry i've got the luggage rack and sissy bar on here that my backpack is strapped to um this is an a great everyday machine um i would like to maybe see cruise or not cruise uh heated grips on here and other than that it's really nice um it's it's exactly what you'd expect it's a premium experience rolling down the road the suspension is nice and soft the seat's comfortable the ergonomics are comfortable um assuming you're a little bit shorter than me they're not super crazy comfortable for me right now but everything here is it's well put together it's a great cruising experience and uh no matter what you say about this bike as a sport touring machine you really can't take away that highway performance from this bike you know yeah maybe it's not the fastest thing in the world but boy oh boy on the highway there are very few motorcycles i'd rather be on than a harley davidson so uh with that being said let's kick it over to the discord q a and see how many questions we have about this bike being slower or faster than other motorcycles i imagine we're going to get a lot of that all right this is my favorite part of these videos is answering as many discord questions as i can if you have any questions you would like to ask about future motorcycles the easiest way to do that is join the discord uh, all the information is down in the description below you'll be able to support the channel and all that good stuff so uh, if you're interested in participating in these videos you can do that there otherwise you just can watch and hang out and i'll probably be responding to your comment too so there's that sir brapsalot asks starting out with the one that i knew i knew we were going to get it is there a significant difference in the power between the 117 and the 114 it's hard to quantify because this motorcycle is heavier than the other 114 bikes, but from where I'm sitting, it feels significantly quicker. Something about the way it's tuned just feels better to me. Um, I really enjoy the way that this bike gets up and goes. The only thing that really annoys me, and I forgot to mention this in the pros and cons section, we're gonna chalk this up as a con, I don't like the uh, cylinder deactivation. This is the first bike I've felt with the cylinder deactivation. It feels really wonky at a stoplight because they deactivate the back cylinder and the RPM jumps to a thousand. So it's just like <laughs> at a stoplight. I don't like that feeling. <laughs> Corgi asking the obvious Harley question, how much oil did it burn? Honestly, these M8s, uh, they're pretty good on oil consumption. He also asks, will it wheelie? Yes, this will wheelie 
am I, do I have the significant, just outright testicular fortitude to do it? No, but some of the SoCal Dyna boys do, and they have definitely wheelied this motorcycle. Ride Red asks a really good question, um, and one that I don't know I'm gonna be able to answer right now, and it's what makes it unique among other Harley cruisers? That's an awesome question, man. That is, that is really good. Uh, if I had to say, it's something about the attitude that this bike brings. It, it really has, it, pardon my French, it's really got this fuck you factor that a lot of the other Harley Davidsons don't have. Th this thing just, it's all muscle, it's all attitude, and then you open up the throttle and it just makes you giggle. I really, I really like the way that this package is put together. And you know, if I was buying a soft tail, this is the one that I would put my money up for. Sierra Bravo asks, is this finally an HD you can ride stock or does it still need a few thousand dollars of mods to be just right? If so, what? So, depends on your size. If you're my size, you need the seat and you need the windscreen. Other than that, I like it as it is. It's making plenty of power. I love the sound that it makes, despite these being a little quiet on the street, you know. Other than that, dude, just ride this bike. It's awesome. Here we have a question from Expecto Delito, who it's a little unfair because he owns a Rocket 3. Is it fast or is it fast for a Harley? I am gonna go ahead and say that this is a fast motorcycle. And I'm going to caveat that only with versus other cruisers. Um, you know, any, any sport bike is gonna outrun this thing. It just will. They're lighter, they're gonna get up and spin up a lot faster than this thing is. But against other cruisers, man, very few bikes are gonna have something for this. And that is gonna round out our questions for today. Uh, let's get this thing back on the road and wrap up my final thoughts on this thing because it's more than meets the eye, honestly. Welcome to the outro part two. My final verdict, part two. Uh, you're not gonna see part one. I think part one is still relevant, but I think I said some things incorrectly. So here we are at the very end of the day. The sun is setting and I wanted to, I wanted another bite at the cherry with my wrap up here on the Lowrider ST. Now, the first thing I said in my wrap up was, I don't like the term for a Harley. I think I accidentally said it a couple of times because it's really easy shorthand for, ah, this motorcycle performs pretty well, but not great compared to everything else. Uh, yeah, okay, if you're looking at this as the sport touring motorcycle, the sport touring motorcycle, yeah, okay, versus other proper sport tours, something like the Tracer 9, uh, Infinite, like even my Hyperstrata is technically a sport tourer. <laughs> this thing comes up a little short, 100%. But I think for a Harley should be for a cruiser. Because relative to other cruisers, man, this thing absolutely mops the floor with them. I would rather be on this than any other soft tail in Harley's lineup. I would rather be on this than a proper road glide because I like it being smaller. I'm one of those guys who started on a Harley, started on a small Harley, and then went into sport bikes. And I got used to how sport bikes are small, tight packages. I like my bikes small. They usually don't fit me all that great, but I work around it. You know, I get I get used to the weight on those smaller motorcycles. And I really, really, the more I ride this thing gel with the small performance angle that Harley's gone here. Again, the irony being that this motorcycle's 731 pounds, but <laughs> relative to the other ST models, this is small, and I like it. I like it for that. Again, this is like a Challenger versus the Tracer 9's Miata, right? So you're not gonna compare a Miata versus like a Challenger Hellcat, you know? 
doesn't make sense. They're two completely different styles of bikes. So it doesn't really make sense to throw this up against, uh, you know, the, the Tracer 9 or whatever. But, you know, they did tack on the Sport Touring tag on it. So as a Sport Tourer, how does it do? Eh. <laughs> it's okay. It's, it's totally fine. The sport angle is a little bit wanting and the touring angle is a little bit wanting. However, when you take the like 9,000 foot view, I really like what they've done with this bike. It feels great to ride. We have to address the elephant in the room and no, the elephant isn't the weight, ha ha ha. <laughs> no, the elephant in the room is the price tag. $22,000, you're gonna struggle to get this thing out of a dealership for 24. Uh, tax title license and all that hooey. Um, that's a spicy meatball. Holy cow. Um, with that kind of money, you are really looking at proper premium motorcycles from the likes of BMW with their K1600 and, uh, You've got other sport tours like uh, the Pikes Peak Multistrada. Um, you're really pushing. You're really pushing the limit when it comes to that price tag. I, I really wish this was 20 grand. And you're you're probably sitting there being like, "Well, Spite, what's 1,700 dollars off the MSRP?" I I think based on the bike that I'm riding here that I don't know that it's a significant enough step up from the 17.5 for the Lowrider S for this guy. I feel like you could get yourself these bags. Uh, you could get yourself an aftermarket fairing that's gonna do just about as well. I, 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 it's hard for me to look at that price tag and, and be happy with it. Last question though becomes, would I put it in my stable? And that's, that's hard for me to say, honestly. Maybe used, maybe you get one used, it's under 20 grand, probably, you know, seven, 8,000 miles on it uh, because service on Harleys, these things these things last forever, man. You, you really, you don't have to worry about picking up a used Harley. They're usually ridden by a bunch of old farts who like to go fast in the straights and slow in the corners, so. You know, you don't, you really don't have to worry about picking one of these up used. Oh man, yay! It's time for a little bit of go time. Oh, <laughs> oh I hit the cuts twice because the gearbox was just getting wonky on me. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I do think that the I think the limiter is set out of uh, out of mercy more so than necessity. I think this could rev out a little bit higher. Come on, Harley. So guys, that's gonna wrap up my thoughts on the Lowrider ST. It's a great, great package. If maybe seventeen hundred dollars too expensive. Now a big, big shout out to Harley Davidson for sending this thing out to me. That's all thanks to you guys too, by the way. The only reason why this motorcycle showed up is because you guys are out there supporting the channel. So a huge shout out to you guys and thank you from the bottom of my heart. And then the last one, obviously our surprise sponsor for today, Flying Eyes. If you wanna get yourself some Harley tested Flying Eyes sunglasses, Click that link down in the description below. Use the code SPITE, 10% off your order. I'm gonna catch you guys in the next one and I'm gonna keep riding this Lowrider ST. I'm gonna put a whole bunch of miles on this bike before they ask for it back. I don't, I don't think they realize how many miles I'm gonna throw down on this bike. <laughs> uh, I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.